here, this is called a shunt play. This is called a shunt play. This is the position and white is to move. So white threatens here. White threatens to take this black stone, so black will have to respond. He can't respond this way because then white will come over here. And then this is in this is in um this is in Atari, so when black responds to that, then white has gotten this one killed. So black cannot push this way. Black has to push this way, so white extends out. And black, seeing that this stone is going to be in danger next, we'll have to put one here. White will continue to close off. Black will try to put this white stone in danger while so it's a double danger because it's a it's a Atari plus a threat to finish this white stone off with this squeeze play. So white responds that this this was not there. White responds then black will come over and try to put this stone in jeopardy because if he doesn't then white will get to do this and these two black stones will be dead so white must I mean black must try to take this stone So that when white tries to do this, black could take. So the next thing white does is to try to put these three in jeopardy in Atari. And when black connects with this empty triangle, when black connects, he forms a empty triangle. One, two, three, right there empty triangle. And that's a shunt play because by putting a stone here by um by black responding here and forming an empty triangle, white just puts it here and these four five stones are dead. This is a shunt play and this is on page fifty four of this Teach Yourself Go book. Teach Yourself Go on page 54. A shunt play. Right here. When, when either this black stone is in place or this black stone is in place, then you put in the next stone, then this empty triangle is shunted. Another example belonging with the warning about empty triangles. A typical ta tactic to break into territory. This pattern of playing three with one already in place. So one is already in place, and you play three, This tactic, uh, this pattern of playing three with one already in place is surprisingly hard to see coming. It's called the shunt play by this author. So, White sets up this shunt play. Looking, it starts out looking like this.
So, black has a potential for a shunt play here when he connects. And then if somehow white could get stones all, if he could get a stone in place here, something like this, and then he, with, so with this stone already in place, putting a shunt play here, that would kill this entire area here. So, White goes about trying to make that come to fruition. He threatens this stone. Black has to respond. So, White comes up this way. Black sees this black stone being threatened. He extends that. White tries to close off to make these two only have two liberties. Now black is going to try to threaten this white stone and and have a Atari, so it's a double threat. One of an Atari and one of an impending threat. It's kind of like a edge play. Squeeze. Edge play. An edge play. So white has to respond here because this is a delayed threat. It still takes a few steps, even though this white stone is dead for sure. If this black stone comes here, it, it's time delayed, it's not immediate. So white responds this way. Black will push. Now white will try to convince black to connect this empty triangle here. So white puts a stone here. That's the stone that's in place. Black comes in. And that's the shunt configuration when this stone, number one, is already in place. Then you put in number three. So, one is already in place. Two, black responds to save to connect these stones with that group. Two, and then three with one in place equals the shunt play.